From July 1st until August 19, 1990, 380 students and professors from the Soviet Union arrived in New York to participate in the International Leadership Conference, a project of USA CARP. In Moscow in April 1990, the Reverend Sun Myung Moon successfully convened the 11th World Media Conference. One project he immediately sponsored was a Soviet student leadership conference of educational and cultural exchange. The best students were selected from 46 universities and institutes, including Moscow and Leningrad State Universities, the top two universities in the Soviet Union. With them came professors, journalists, and members of the Leningrad City Parliament. This program would be the first step to fulfill the promise he made to President Gorbachev to fully support the development of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Upon arrival, the delegation received a warm reception at the headquarters of the Unification Movement in New York. And at the opening ceremony, they were welcomed by World Car President Mr. Hyo Jin Moon. Possible if all of you and all, I guess, everybody in this room work together for the goal of unifying the race, the human race. That's a very big and very idealistic goal, but somebody has to do it. There has to be a beginning. Everything starts from beginning. to New York. Спасибо. Мы рады вас видеть в Нью-Йорке. Cultural and national barriers seemed to melt away as Soviet and American students celebrated the unity we felt in sharing our common vision. From the very first night, students thanked Reverend and Mrs. Moon for the opportunity to visit America and for rekindling their hopes for the future. Sightseeing in New York City began with a visit to the eternal symbol of freedom, the Statue of Liberty. A sentimental moment for the Soviet students, whose visit was only made possible by the recent opening of the Soviet Union to an era of newfound freedoms. They were nearly overwhelmed, trying to absorb all the new sights, sounds, and experiences as they toured the streets of New York City. Next, a tour of Columbia University gave the students their first taste of an American campus and a chance to engage in conversations with American students. Well, I'd like to be the first to officially welcome you to the Unification Theological Seminary, and I hope that you have... We arrived in Barrytown for the first portion of the conference. Five days participation in various presentations and discussions, including Reverend Moon's World View. God's effort is necessary, but also man's effort. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's like uh, even if you have all 99 out of 100 pieces are all put in the place, but until you put that 100th, that last piece, the puzzle's not finished. We are now living in a modern age of reason, of rationality, of logic. Modern man cannot understand anything if it lacks scientific proof or logic. So religious thought or internal truth must also be explained logically and scientifically. I would like to suggest that history 
has a spiritual purpose. Not just events unfolding because of cultural development, not just political forces, not just economic forces, not just military battles. History is something else. Of course, it includes all of this. But what underlies history is what I would say a spiritual principle leading man back to God. Lectures covered the contents of the seven-day Divine Principle Seminar, concluding with the second coming and the life of Reverend Moore. The students listened with sincerity and genuine interest to new concepts being introduced. Stimulating question and answer sessions followed each presentation. Inspired by the ideas, students and professors would often express their gratitude to the lecturers. I am greatly appreciate uh, that those experience that I've seen how we can change our society. We can change. We can change it through changing our people's relationships, through changing our spiritual world. And this was the greatest experience which I've had, which I've had in my life. My great uh, gratitude to everybody else, to everybody in this place. We, li we like it very much, such beautiful p people we meet here. So my favorite idea is from Dostoevsky, our Russian classic. He said that beauty will save the world. I think that this idea is very close to the unification principles, to the, um, to the kingdom of true love and beauty. You gave us a real possibility to know how people can live in the true love, in the true community. And you are living here in their harmony with nature and with each other. I, <laughs> I'm very anxious, excuse me. I want to tell you, I want to say you thank you very much for this possibility for us to know much about, about true love, about true living in friendship. And uh, this idea of the unification all over the world, I think it is the only possibility for the humankind to survive in the dangerous situation. I think that we should be delighted to participate in all the future international programs. The rest of our students are still waiting for the invitations to come here to America or maybe to South Korea to participate in these conferences. But, and we expect you to come to our country to establish the chapters of your organizations in different towns and cities, in different institutes and universities of our country. A symposium was also held, where professors and students from both countries spoke on the topic, the task of students in the 1990s. The task of, uh, of saving the planet can't be the task of, of one of several countries, I think. And the civilization has reached the stage where the idea of unification of uh, efforts is, uh, is prevailing and to save the material world is possible only through saving uh, the spirit. If we can understand each other on this conference, it will be one little step for saving this world. Summer days, it's the road to Barry Town, to family and friends that means so much to me, that means so much to me. You open your heart, you give it your all, just when you think to stay, it's time to go. And let me come home to Barry Town, let me come home to Barry Town. 
The students found many ways to share their joy and enthusiasm in their own unique ways. While NATO was officially declaring the end of the Cold War, the Soviet students were eager to meet American soldiers at West Point Military Academy, creating unforgettable memories. The students experienced their first American-style campfire and barbecue on a moonlit summer night on the final evening at the seminary. It was a new experience for us all as they enjoyed their first roasting of marshmallows around the campfire. And those with birthdays were given a surprise celebration. Okay, one, two, three, blow! Whoa. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. As we linked arms to sing songs around the fire, an indescribable oneness of heart and spirit was felt by all. Reflecting on memories carved forever in our hearts, we boarded the buses and embarked upon the second portion of the tour. Our next stop would be Belvedere, the training and educational center of the Unification Church of America. we were greeted by a welcoming party, which was the children of the members of the Unification Church. The students and professors were enchanted by their Russian, Korean, and American songs, which moved many to tears. The generosity of the Soviet students was again revealed as they showered the children with gifts from their homeland. Final barriers were dissolved through these young ambassadors of peace. A scenic drive through New Jersey led us to the gates of Princeton University, one of the landmarks of the American Revolution. Students were curious to see the institution where Albert Einstein spent many years in research and teaching. This building also became the capital of the United States for about four months. That's also why this building is very famous. The capital at that time was in Philadelphia. We're gonna to go to Philadelphia next. That was the capital of the United States. After touring the streets of Philadelphia in horse-drawn carriages, students excitedly explored the birthplace of America, the site of the signing of the Declaration of Independence and the American Constitution. In Washington, D.C., we visited The World and I and The Washington Times, a paper which has quickly made its mark on the nation's capital. They observed with great interest the high-tech production process of an American newspaper and magazine. And they were fascinated to hear editor-in-chief Arnaud de Borgrav discuss the current affairs of the Soviet Union. Let me remind you that uh, material goods is not going to be the answer to your problems, not material goods alone. The spiritual side of life is terribly important, as I'm sure you would agree and hence the tremendous religious revival today in the Soviet Union. 
The Washington Times treated the students to a luncheon, where they were addressed by the newspaper's proprietor and former South Korean diplomat, the Ambassador Sung Kuk Khan. I wish each and every one of you great success in your future endeavors, and God bless you. At the farewell banquet in the midst of the celebration, there was also a sense of sadness as the time of parting drew nearer. For concluding remarks, project coordinator Tony Devine introduced the national director of USA CARP, Dr. Jun Ho Suk. Let us work together to create new moral revolution, renaissance, and at the same time to build the world of harmony and unity and peace. So I hope you can have a new commitment for the future for your country, for this world. Let's work together. May God bless you. Thank you very much. The certificates of achievement represent only the beginning of a journey that we look forward to sharing together and which will surely bring our nations ever closer together. I think that this environment will continue in the years and probably will have great connections. I know Mr. Moon believed that uh, in 10 years there will be great peace in the world. I think now all these people here believe in it too. So I want to thank Mr. Moon for his great idea to do that. In our cruel world, the only way to do is our unification and we understand the principle of unification or thank you very much for all your hard work that you are doing for the mankind and I'm absolutely sure that all of us would like and will join your activity it's a difficult process to be an ideal man but still we'll try to be at least we try to to become a true person. You remember the last lines of the last presentation. We need to become a true person. That is the most difficult process, to be a true, loving, understanding person. And it will help us to unite the whole world. In conclusion, the essence of the whole experience was beautifully captured in hand-painted cards made by the students to express their heartfelt appreciation for one of the best experiences of their lives. Dear Reverend Moon and Mrs. Moon, from the bottom of our hearts, we would like to express our gratitude for the opportunity to take part in the International Leadership Conference. This organization, I think it is the thing that can unite all the students, all the young people all over the world. Your theory, your philosophy, your faith, it's a very good one. It's beautiful because it teaches to love. Let us promise to each other to remain friends forever. You give us a real possibility to know how people can live in the true love, in the true community. And you are living here in their harmony with nature and with each other. I, <laughs> I'm very anxious, excuse me. I like everybody here. I feel like at home, really. We're sure that we leave the part of our heart here. I had the best experience in my life.
Приезжайте в Ленинград. До свидания.